Hello, welcome to Dungeoneers Pack, a channel bringing you player focused discussions and character guides for 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons. My name is Josh, thank you for watching. Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft is upon us, taking players to the Demi Plains of Dread. The horror theme elements have inspired me to bring you a character build for a concept that I've personally been wanting to play. In this video, I'm going to bring you a ranger build that will have you be a spider empowered duelist that will haunt your enemies and allow you to survive the Demi Plains of Dread. Before jumping into the build, let's take a look at my character build guidelines. I'm going to focus on levels 1 to 10 as most campaigns are played in this level range. Builds will be optimized to fulfill the concept, but also be effective for combat and roleplay. I will be covering the features in race, class, and background choices that make the build possible. And ability scores will not be defined as each table decides how ability scores are calculated. Instead, I will provide a ranking as to which ability scores you should prioritize for the build. The concept for this character is that they are a sentient swarm of spiders that have the consciousness and body of a fallen duelist. Through unknown magic, the swarm and spirit have bonded together and they travel the demi plains of dread feeding on the weak and seeking revenge for what has befallen them. For this build's lineage, I'm choosing the damp here from Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft as many of the traits can be reskinned to play a character with the abilities of a spider. The damp here has the ability to climb up walls and has a bite attack that can inflict disadvantage that can be flavored as a target being inflicted with venom. When it comes to this build's class and subclass, I went with the Swarmkeeper Ranger because it allows us to portray our character being a collection of spiders in a meat suit. To play up the tragic and horror elements of the character for the background, I went with the Haunted One. The harrowing event feature helps generate a tragic moment in their life that caused their current state. For this character's in combat role, they will excel at being the striker, able to focus down a single enemy, weaving themselves in and out of the fight. And for their out of combat role, they will excel as the party scout. They are able to spot enemies or traps that come their way. Now let's take a look at our ability scores. We are going to prioritize dexterity for our attack accuracy, damage, initiative, skills, and armor class. Next is wisdom to support some crucial scouting skills and to support our difficulty checks for spells and some subclass features. Our third stat will be constitution for some decent hit points, followed by intelligence, then charisma, and strength will be our dub stat. Since this character is built for a Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft game, I'm also going to give it a Dark Gift. Dark Gifts are a boon-like mechanic giving a character some additional abilities or benefits but come with a downside. The Dark Gift I chose for this character is Echoing Soul as it sums up the idea of our character's spirit bonding with a swarm of spiders. They gain two additional skill proficiencies of our choice and I will go over those skill choices in just a bit. This character also gains an additional language of our choice. The downside for this Dark Gift is that we receive the Intrusive Echoes trait, which has us roll on a table whenever we roll a natural one on the d20 for an attack roll ability check or saving throw. When it comes to our skills, nothing should be too surprising as they all seem to be the standard options for a ranger. From our class I went with perception as it is the key skill for scouting, then I chose stealth and nature. From our background we will pick up survival and arcana. The arcana skill could play into the idea of our character having ties to dark magic that cause their current state. Speaking of dark magic, from our dark gift I picked up sleight of hand and insight. Sleight of hand will help us with busting traps while insight will let us decipher the intent of a creature. Now let's get into a level by level breakdown. Starting with level 1, we begin with our class proficiencies. We are proficient with light armor, medium armor, shields, simple weapons, and martial weapons. For our saving throws, we are proficient in strength and dexterity. The first feature for this build will be favored foe, an alternate option we can take in place of favored enemy. Since this build will focus on dual wielding, we need to remove as many options that rely on our bonus action so we can keep swinging with our offhand. Favored foe acts as a hunter's mark replacement, adding extra damage to one attack but doesn't use our bonus action to activate it. We will also be taking the Adept Explorer feature in place of Natural Explorer. At first level under Adept Explorer, we gain the canny ability which grants us advantage on a skill check we make with the chosen skill we are proficient with. Choose Perception as it will let us fulfill the scout role for the party and reinforce the predator instinct this character should have. With level 2 we pick up a fighting style and first level spells. For our fighting style I went with 2 weapon fighting to add our ability modifier to the damage of our offhand attacks. When choosing this build's first level spells I went with the options that mimic the abilities of a spider. Despite using our bonus action to cast, ensnaring strike is a flavorful option that can be flavored as our spiders webbing our enemies during our attack. Snare is another spell with web like qualities that we can use to set up a trap. Also consider detect poison and disease and the jump spells. At level 3 we get our subclass and as previously mentioned we will be choosing Swarm Keeper. Our first feature from the subclass will be Gathered Swarm which provides us additional damage or a tactical option whenever we attack. This ability could be seen as spiders leaving our body and attaching themselves to our blades to assist the attack. We also get Swarm Keeper Magic which expands our spell list and allows us to cast the Mage Hand Cantrip. Mage Hand gives us extra utility while letting us play up the idea that our spiders can break away from our body to help with minor tasks. Next at level 4 we get the option of an ability score increase or a feat 
feet, and I went with the feet. I chose Dual Wielder to bump our armor class while using two weapons, and to be able to use two repairs which will increase our damage output. An additional benefit to wielding the repairs is that they will have the piercing damage type, which will play into another ability later in the build. For level 5 we get the extra attack feature and second level spells. For our spells I would consider Web and Protection from Poison. Web is self-explanatory. This character is a sentient collection of spiders so they should be able to cast Web. Protection from Poison could be our character being able to use their own venom to protect themselves or their teammates. With level 6 we get improvements to Favorite Foe and to Def Explorer. For Favorite Foe, our damage die is now 1d6. Under Deft Explorer, the roving ability increases our speed by an additional 5 feet. It also grants us a swim and climb speed equal to our walking speed. The climb speed doesn't matter though due to our lineage. When we hit level 7 we gain Writhing Tide, which will give us a little more vertical movement granting us a 10 foot flight speed. At level 8 we get to choose between an ability score increase or feat again, and yet again I went with another feat, this time choosing Piercer. With Piercer, we can take advantage of the damage from our repairs and the extra damage from our Gathered Swarm feature. This feat can potentially help us increase our average damage per round with the added benefit of adding a damage die when we crit. The flavor behind the piercer feat could be our spiders becoming more aggressive and effective against the enemies we are facing. Hitting level 9 gets us access to 3rd level spells and here are my recommendations. Gaseous form could be flavored as our character changing its shape from a humanoid one into a horde of floating spiders. While spiders can't fly, they have been documented to use their web to balloon themselves into the air. We can use that as an inspiration for this spell. Conjure Barrage is a solid area damage spell that could be flavored as us launching a bunch of spiders at our enemies within range. The last spell to consider would be Water Walk as we can take inspiration from a variety of species of spiders that can walk on water. And finally for level 10, we get a new ability under our Deft Explorer feature and obtain Nature's Veil. With Deft Explorer we get the Tireless ability which will let us gain some temporary hit points as an action. Nature's Veil is an alternate option in place of Hide in Plain Sight, giving us the ability to turn invisible as a bonus action until our next turn. Now let's take a look at this build's pros and cons. For our pros, this build has a streamlined action economy for ease of play. Favorite Foe helps us start attacking with both of our weapons on our first turn. We will have increased mobility compared to most martial characters. The Dampier lineage and roving ability provide increases to our natural speed, and on top of this, we are capable of climbing like a spider and can eventually swim at our full movement speed, which expands our exploration abilities that many characters don't have access to without spells or magic items. Now for our cons. This build may be too linear in combat for some. In combat, this build has an emphasis on using the attack action. Gathered Swarm and some of our spell choices can help with adding some variety in combat, but even then, it's very limited. In regards to potential damage output, an argument could be made that the exclusion of Hunter's Mark is a mistake. In the long run, Hunter's Mark damage will beat out Favorite Foe. The extra turn to set up the spell may be worth it. With that said, I want to hear from you. What kind of character will you be playing in your horror fantasy games? Let me know down in the comments section. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, I drop a video every week, so go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you want to check out more character builds I have done, I have a playlist for you on the screen or in the description below. Alright, I'm out of here. Have a good one.